welcome to another Bumpai video. And today we have the JDM Trivia number 13, which is all about the 4 AGE overview that I want to give. This is the primer of uh, a bunch of uh, other videos that I will do about the 4 AGE, about the specifics. There is so much information about this engine uh, that I it simply cannot be covered in, let's say, 20 or 30 uh, videos alone. But I'll just highlight most of the interesting bits and try to insert links to resources that you can read about specific topics. Um, this first primer will just give you an overview of the engines which were available and on which models they were delivered and what their specifics were. Uh, not into very big detail, um, so I will only cover like the, the most um, basic level of detail and if there is more to tell about it I'll cover that in a different topic. For instance intakes, there's a lot of uh, difference between intakes. Moving on, um, we have an overview of valve covers and the valve covers of the 4 AGE will or can indicate what version you are looking at. And obviously these valve covers are the factory OEM valve covers and people paint their valve covers afterwards. So it doesn't always tell you the exact truth. But I'll try to dive into each and every one of them and uh, the specifics you can find on the engine. So the first version of the engine, the first generation, was called the Blue Top. It had black letters, uh, black characters uh, on the valve covers and, and blue in blue 16 valve. Uh, second generation uh, is uh, the red and black top. Uh, it's got black written in, in twin cam uh, and 16 valve was written in red. Uh, some cases there were engines that actually had uh, uh, let's say the blue top cover on the red and black top. And third generation this is the most sought after uh, engine of them all. This is the twin cam 16 valve written in red, red top and it's a high compression engine with small port and I'll tell you all about what that means. Uh, next generation we have the fourth generation silver top and the silver top introduced the five valves per cylinder uh, making it a 20 valve engine so that's why it says twin cam tw uh, 20. Uh, it's uh, a very huge increase in power compared to the four valve system and then we have the block black top, which is the last incarnation, last generation of the natural aspirated um, 4 AGE. And this engine was the most powerful one. Then we have the 4 AGZE engine. It's the supercharged engine. This is also a significant model for uh, 4 AGE. Um, as this was the first engine that was supercharged, in a production car in Japan. Um, the engine itself had a, a, also three generations and I will not cover the, these generations in this video. I'll do that in a separate supercharger uh, trivia. Moving on, we have the TRD Formula Atlantic uh, engine. Uh, it was mostly used for race car engines. Um, it had a dry sump system. Um, I'll also cover this engine or the, these type of engines in a different topic. So the first generation was the three rib blue top and three ribs says something about the block itself and I'll dive into the specifics later. Uh, it became available in uh, May 1983 and it was available until May 1987. It had an output of 130 horsepower and this is the Japanese standard, so not the international brake horsepower standard. Um, if you would calculate it uh, through that, it would be somewhere near 122 horsepower. The compression of the engine was a 1 to 99.4, um, fairly low, but in Europe it's, uh, it's a higher compression, uh, 1 to 10. And the reason for this is the, the, the fuel um, in Europe is a lot better than uh, other parts of uh, the world back in uh, 1983. Uh, also in Japan, I think, they also got like the 10, uh, 1 to 10 in some cases. 
Uh, moving on, uh, it first got introduced into the A86, so the Corolla 11, in May 1983, uh, also in the Sprinter Torano A86, and of course internationally whenever uh, an A86 was delivered, like the uh, Corolla GTS or the Corolla GT in Europe. And then the third car that got introduced with uh, the 4AG was the Carina GTR, and the Carina GTR was delivered in the same month, so May 1983. However, the, the Levin and the Torano were slightly uh, quicker with the, the delivery of the 4AG. Also, the Carina was already an existing model. Um, this model only lived until June 1985, and remember this because we're getting back to that. Uh, we have the Celica, Celica GTR, which became available in 1980, um, August 1983 and it's based upon the same platform as the Carina. That also means that um, uh, this was slightly later than the Carina, which is a bit odd because the Celica is truly the performance type of car, the sports car. Corona, that was the more classy one on the same platform, the Corona GTR, uh, became only available in October 1983. So Toyota didn't introduce the, the Trio at the same time. Um, also the picture here is wrong, it's not the Corona GTR but the Corona GTTR. But body shape is the same and that's why I chose this picture. And I couldn't find another one. Uh, moving on, we have the Toyota MR2, AW11, and the AW11 was basically built around the 4A engine, and it was mounted transversely, so it was 90 degrees, uh, uh, so mounted 90 degrees compared to the existing 4A G in the Carina and in the Corolla. This got introduced in June 1984. Uh, it was Toyota's first. Uh, mid-engine sports car and that's also why they have to mount it transversely and uh, not uh, lengthwise. Uh, also transversely mounted was the Corolla FX A82 uh, which became available in October 1984 and then we have the Carina FF GTR 8160 which was the successor of the Carina GTR AA63. Uh, so here it got introduced in August 1985, uh, all the others uh, were phased out in, in uh, June and July 1985 and this one is the successor and so is the Corona FF GTR and it also got introduced on the same day. And of course the Celica GT which was also based on the same platform uh, also got introduced in 1985. Now, I was speaking about uh, the three rib design, and the three rib design can best be seen if you look at the, at the, at the bottom part of the engine, the block. Um, if you look at the block itself, you can see that there are three ribs in the middle here. Uh, and these ribs basically give the strength to the engine. And the three rib design is something specific for only the first generation of the 4 AGE. Now, as I was uh, saying earlier, the first generation introduced the 16 valve head, and that basically means that you have four valves per cylinder. And you can see in this um, basically this layout of the whole head of the of the engine there's a double overhead cam here you can see the cam wheels over here and these cams operate they have multiple lobes here uh, they operate these valves and these valves are two intake and two exhaust valves and that's significant because um, compared to the previous double overhead cam engines made by Toyota uh, this doubled the number of uh, valves in the in the head and if you want to know what the advantage is of having a 16 valve um, or basically four valves per cylinder or more valves per cylinder uh, there's a very good explanation by engineering explained 
and I'm going to post uh, the video and, and link below here that explains you exactly why you want to have more valves instead of a bigger valve to uh, get more air fuel uh, coming in. Uh, moving onwards, we have the Tevis or Tevis, depending on where you live in the world, the Toyota Variable Induction System. The Toyota Variable Induction System already existed in the 1G GE engine, uh, which got delivered in the, if I'm correct, GX61 uh, and some of the other cars like the Soar, and it got introduced in 1982. Anyway, the, the TVIS is a Toyota Variable Induction System and it's actually a very crude system. It sounds fancy, but it isn't. Um, you can see here that there are two sets of butterfly valves uh, and they are operated by one single vacuum line operated uh, canister. And the solenoid tells the canister to open up the, the vacuum and the vacuum will suck out the uh, the air from uh, the canister and that will flip open or close, uh, that will flip open, yes, so it will open up the butterfly. And those butterflies basically block off one intake valve per cylinder. And Toyota was a bit afraid that having a 16 valve head, so four valves per cylinder, uh, would um, increase uh, the fuel consumption. And especially in Japan, they weren't that keen on emissions and the emissions had to be good. So using less fuel would also be a lot better. And these butterfly valves basically close and open uh, that extra valve if the engine revs above 4500 RPM. And once you hit 4500 RPM, the ECU will give a signal to uh, the solenoid to open up the butterfly falls and you, you, if you are in a, in a car that has the 4 AGE it, it, it feels a bit like um, let's say uh, the VTEC so you will get like this VTEC kit <laughs> it's not exactly the same but you can feel that the power increases a lot around 4500 rpm and uh, you, you this basically is the reason why that happens and there are some people swear that if you take out this butterfly valve the engine will be a lot torqueier. Uh, but as far as that concerned it never has been proven that it actually does that. It only decreases the fuel uh, efficiency of your engine. So anyway, um, this is the reason why this system is there. Then we have different mountings of the intake. So we have the intake uh, longitudinal and that's for the uh, rear, rear wheel driven car, so front engine rear wheel drive. While we have also the transverse mounted engine uh, where the intake is flipped. You can see clearly that this one is front facing or front cover facing, while here the intake is facing the other side. And this is for transverse engines, like in the Amr2. Um, this also means that it's not a one-on-one -on -one swap if you take uh, a transverse engine and just put it into uh, any uh, real-wheel driven car. But if you swap the intake, it will be done. Now, moving on, next generation. Generation 2 has a black twin cam uh, let, uh, writing while having red uh, 16 valve writing and that means that this is the second generation and don't pin me down on this because it also sometimes is being written in blue so it's a blue red top. Uh, the output was decreased because the, the compression was lower, uh, some uh, emission uh, standards had to be met, so the, the output only was 120 horsepower in Japanese metrics. Uh, so that was a bit less powerful engine. However, it got seven rips and we'll get into the reasoning behind seven rips. Uh, this engine also got delivered in the AW11 MR2 because the AW11 MR2 was delivered between 1984 and 1989. And in 1987, this new version, this new generation got introduced. Um, 
Also in the Celica GT8160, it continued with this engine, but that was only delivered in Europe only. So in Japan, they discontinued uh, the 4 AGE power Celica, uh, and the same goes for the US. For the Corolla, the new generation A92, um, this introduced the new engine. So the Corolla GT, Corolla FX GT, Corolla 11, Sprinter GT and the Sprinter Tirana all got this new generation of uh, the 4 AGE. The seven rib design, you can see clearly here that there are seven ribs instead of three ribs. And this gives a lot more structural rigidity in, into the block and makes the uh, block less stressed if it's under high load. And this is also the reason why people believe that a seven rib design is far stronger than a three rib design. And especially um, that moves into the reasoning why newer engines of the 4 AGE are more sought after. Then we have the uh, third generation, which is the so-called Raptor. And it has twin cam and 16 valve, both written in red. And People can paint valve covers, so don't pin me down on this. <clears throat> there are a couple of other things that you can identify it with. For instance, the cover here for the spark plugs, that is a giveaway. But more importantly, there's a different intake. And this engine is called a small top, a uh, small, small port, a red top. Uh, and it is a high compression engine with uh, a smaller uh, intake. Now if you go and look at the small port itself, you can see here at the bottom the big port, which is the first and second generation of the 4 AGE. And you have here the small port for the red top. And the small port red top means that it, uh, the intake is narrower, uh, so a lot less air fuel will be passing through. But there is no necessity for that because there is no more uh, TAVIS, so there is no variable intake anymore. Also, uh, pictured on top is the 4AFE, which was delivered around the same time. It's also a 16 valve head, but it's single cam. Uh, also introduced in, the, in this generation is the NOx sensor. And that's a significant improvement because you have a high compression uh, engine. You also need to have a NOx sensor to sense whether uh, the engine is going to knock or not and then um, take action on that, uh, make the, the, the fuel mixture uh, different. Uh, also newly introduced are the oil squirters and the oil squirters are basically tiny oil lines underneath the pistons. They squirt on every time the, uh, um, the piston goes up and down, it squirts a bit of oil underneath the piston and that will cool the piston down. And that's really necessary if you have a high compression engine. So this whole engine was built around high compression and that's also the reason why it's one of the most sought after uh, engines of them all, because this one has what they think or what they believe to be the, the most rigid engine block, so it can withstand the most uh, abuse. Uh, and uh, people speak of it as it's capable of handling at least up until 250 horsepower naturally aspirated. That is also significant. So, uh, uh, and also because this engine was only delivered from, sorry, I have to go back one more. There it is. So it was only available in uh, 1989 till 1991. So that means that it's only delivered for two years and that means that the, the engine itself is quite rare compared to all the other types of 4 AGEs. Uh, and the compression was 10 to, uh, 1 to 10.3, which is quite high. Available in A92, it's got the same lineup as the previous generation, but uh, all these cars switched over to this new high compression engine. So 11, Sprinter GT, Trenno, they all got this engine. Now the next generation is the fourth generation, uh, so-called Silvertop. And the Silvertop is because the top is painted in silver. 
Uh, it introduced uh, the, the variable, variable valve timing, it introduced in individual throttle bodies and it in introduced 5 valves per cylinder, making it a 20 valve engine. So this silver top had an output of 160 horsepower and that's like 20 horsepower more than the, the high compression small port which is a significant increase and that increase could be reached by increasing the compression even more to 10.5 uh, it includes also the oil squirters it also includes um, what else was there it's still a small port um, however the largest difference is the, this, the extra valve so there is more air fuel mixture coming into the into the engine or is capable of doing that and especially under a high um, under high stress or under high revs um, it takes time to actually suck in the air fuel mixture and this is also explained in the engineering explain uh, engineering explained video about why you want to have more valves um, so you need the extra valve to draw in extra fuel under, under a higher RPM. Or also this introduced a variable valve timing and that was really advanced in 19, uh, 1991 uh, because there was almost nobody, nobody else doing variable, variable valve timing back in those days. Um, the variable, variable valve timing is done by the by a stepper motor and the stepper motor basically turns a bit faster than the cam and then advancing the, uh, the cam slightly and that also means that the intake for instance is being opened up slightly earlier than, uh, than before and this is only done above certain RPM comparable to uh, the trickery they did with uh, the Tavis uh, also, this introduced independent throttle bodies comparable to uh, carburetors on uh, a bike, but then like, uh, with uh, fuel injection in there. And it's slightly different. Uh, but that also in increased the power a lot. This engine was quite rare, uh, but still delivered in great quantities. But uh, it got delivered in the Corolla 11A101 and it got delivered in the Sprinter Torino A101 as well. And both these cars were available for four years, so that makes the time span of the silver top quite relatively long. If we then move on to the black top, the black top was only available for roughly said three years, till July 1998. Uh, this fifth generation was another uh, uh, iteration over the, the silver top, so it uh, featured 20 volts as well. The power increased slightly to 165 horsepower. The compression was even up a little bit more to uh, 11, 1 to 11. And also keep in mind that by introducing this engine, Toyota reached uh, the 100 horsepower per liter mark. They passed it. So, this engine is performing as great as any racing engine back in those days. Um, to give you an example, the McLaren F1 has a similar uh, 100 horsepower per liter uh, output. And that's the type of engine we're speaking about. It's highly advanced for its time and that's also why uh, the blacktop is actually the one that everyone is looking after, looking for after the small port. So the blacktop is an easy drop-in replacement of your 4 AGE, increasing the output with another 35 horsepower. Uh, torque is a lot better. Um, however, the small port is still the one you really want if you want to tune it uh, and then go for the 250 horsepower and natural aspirated. Moving on, what are the uh, improvements then? Well, larger throttle bodies. So the throttle bodies uh, were bigger. Um, the, the chamber had an increased volume of 2.8 cc, so that's also a significant increase. It's just like if you would actually um, port and polish your hat. 
similar to that. Uh, map sensor on the on the intake instead of uh, airflow sensor. Uh, it had a very good uh, a variable valve timing in the silver top, but now it, they improved it even more on the black top and the increased high compression. I mentioned that earlier. This engine was only available between May 1995 and April 1997 on uh, the Corolla 11. I think that's supposed to say 1998. I'm sorry about that error. And then here, of course, it's there as well. So, but uh, until 1998, it was available. And that kind of concludes the, the four AGE lineup. And, and imagine that th these cars, this engine was available for let's say only 13, 14 years. Um, is that true? 15 years, 15 years. So for 15 years, this engine was available and it, um, Toyota couldn't improve it much more than this and still obtain or maintain drivability with this engine. Because also the Sprinter Torano, it doesn't use uh, normal petrol anymore. You need high octane petrol to run this engine while the first 4 AGE could run on any normal ordinary petrol so run 87 or 91 or 95 it doesn't really matter which one uh, the 4 AGE will run on it while this engine only needs uh, 98 or higher so I hope you enjoyed this overview. Um, I hope to see you next time when I'm going to cover the supercharger engine uh, and the TRD uh, engine or Formula Atlantic engine in the one after that. So I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any comments, if you think I missed something or was not clear about something, just leave a comment below. All right, see you, bye and take care or the other way around.